I'm Kelsey Moser, and you're watching Thorne's YouTube channel, where no sandbagging goes unscrutinized. By the way, when you said earlier that you tried to get Larson to replace Jazuki to be like, that was how like, you would both stay in the team. This is actually years and years, if people don't know, before Larson was in the LEC. It's like at least over yeah. a year before. So, like, uh, was he really just someone you knew from Solo Cube? Did you actually spot anything about his game? Was there anything interesting, like, you'd kind of seen in him? Um, I the, the year I promoted with Giants, I had to face Larson's team in the playoffs. I think Wind and Rain, it was called. Okay. And, I mean, we, we 3 0 them pretty easily easily i would say but i in the games i felt like wow this is enemy mid laner is actually doing really well with jizuka like usually jizuka would roll over everyone but he was holding his, his himself really well and i would, could also sometimes hear some tilt in jizuka's voice like i don't know like i guess he was doing well in lane with jizuka so and then um i i don't know it's, it's like at some point i added larson in solo queue Played some do cues with him, and I instantly saw this guy is really good. So that's where it came from. Yeah. One thing I wanted to ask: it's an unfair question because you can only speculate, and now you're just with the rest of us on the stream watching LEC games. But obviously, you did play with Cabochard, and in my opinion, back then he was still really fucking good. Like I'll, I'll I'll give it up to people. I'm kind of a mark. Like I thought he was amazing back in the old team. I thought he was actually a banger in this one. I even thought he was good in the RLs. I was actually very shocked of what happened this split in the winter split at the time of recording, where it went really badly, and he, he was actually looking exposed a bit. Like, do you have any sense for what what was, what was Cabochard like back then? And do you have any idea as to what's gone wrong since then like were you also expecting a, a, a triumphant return to lec um i mean back then mm, was well, so long time ago i mean he was a decent player you know like uh, i don't have much connection with my top laners usually like i don't really know how good they are like i don't know he was i guess there you know like he was he was okay, I guess. Uh, I didn't I didn't really expect him to have a great comeback into the LEC this year. Like um, I played with him a bit in solo queue. Uh, I watched the streams a bit, so I didn't think his skill was like quite quite there yet. Uh, so I was I was not surprised. But uh, he's the kind of player who's really confident, believes himself. So I think if he like picks it up, trains a lot, picks up the meta well, he will do well. So. Right, when you were on that German team, you reunited with a player who's been around your career a whole bunch of times, which is the Danish ADC, Mr. Rales. Mm -hmm. And if people don't know, once upon a time, this was actually considered a top prospect that everyone thought would become a Sven, a reckless, this sort of a player would come in the LEC and have like a, like a even a minimum like a Kobe career or something, you know, be like a mainstay. I noticed he was on a million challenger teams and it always felt like he was always like the sub for an LEC team. He was always, it felt like he was always this close to being an LEC. What, what was this player like and what do you think held him back why did he never get properly get like a a, a real lec career do you think uh, i mean mr rallis would always like put limits to himself like he i would be like asking him do you think you could ever be the best ad carry in europe he's like no i was like why i was like people like forgiven i will never be better than them in lane <clears throat> and so it's like i don't know he just like couldn't make it to that next level i think when it came to like his gameplay or his confidence, but he was always uh, one of my favorite teammates ever, like uh, super cool to hang out with, super good friends with me, um, very knowledgeable about the game. Like I could always tell that he had so much more experience than me when it came to macro. He would teach me a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it's sad that he's not around anymore, but I, I always had a really good time playing with him for sure. Right, when you came to join the Schalke team later, obviously, when people will remember, was this was the infamous split where Forgiven came back and he did the comeback. Now, here's the saddest thing I always have to remind people of this is everyone knows how it ended, so everyone can easily go, like, what a stupid pickup, why'd they do that? Like, bro, I was obviously I known this guy. I followed in that off season because in the offseason before the new champions came out, Felios and Senna, he was yeah. fucking grinding on solo queue. And by the way, some of his players look good. He looked like like dude, and he was playing like Caitlin. It was like, dude, Forgiven's back, like holy shit, maybe he's actually and 
he did say all the right things behind the scenes as far as I know. He did tell everyone I'm motivated, you know, I'm going to be the best again. We're going to work out that. And then also, if you if anyone goes back, this is what will prove it. If you ever go back and watch those things like Euphoria and all those shows that are at the talk shows, people were saying these teams winning scrims. Like this team's actually solid in the offseason. Like supposedly there was like pretty sweet. I had no perception at all from anyone that this could be this epic failure it became and lose all the LEC gear. Can you give me some thoughts? When this squad was put together, this actually looks like it's a pretty interesting squad. It's got Ardoam there. It's got some, some pretty good players on this team, right? You must have been hyped for this project. Yeah, I, I was super hyped. I, like, I, at the start, I had to, like, fight for my spot um, with Lurox, but this scrims I played where, um, yeah, like, Forgiven was winning bot lane against the best bot lanes in Europe in scrims. He was... Honestly, he was smashing a lot of people. Like, he... I thought we are going to, like, do a big bang in the league and be, like, top three. Um, <clears throat> just unlucky patch timing. You know, Senna failures come out. You know, it happens. But, yeah, the patch before, we were doing super well in scrims. Um, the teams were... The, the, the scrims were already, like, a bit heated. Even though we were winning, there was still a lot of stuff going on in the reviews. Okay. But it was just to become even better than, like like get better and better like make everyone like competitive um i think he had <clears throat> good intentions but some players like took it the wrong way and then kind of all went to shit you know Right, obviously, because people think they know you because of your public persona on Twitter, stream, etc., which I'm sure is different who you are in a team, and when it's, yeah. the cameras are off and it's behind closed doors and there's no performative aspect, right? People will probably assume, Gillius, you must have had loads of beef with Forgiven. Like, if you're a vocal player, people know he doesn't like people talking back or telling him that, like, he's wrong and stuff. Did you actually have friction? Did you get along with him? What was it like in the team? Honestly... Yeah, like some days, uh, like I, I would explain forgiven like this. Sometimes he just picks a victim and he will like go on that guy <laughs> sure. the whole day. Like he will not let go. Like until he reacts and like fucking loses his mind. And then I, one of those days he just like picked me, you know, like like the whole day he was passive aggressive towards me here and there. And then he realized it's like nothing is happening. Like I'm not like, I'm not losing it, you know. Like, I don't actually, like, care that much. Uh, and then I remember, like, he, like, started screaming at me, like, really hard in front of my face. And I still didn't give him a reaction. And then in the gaming house, I don't know, we met each other in the hallway and we just, like, talked about it and it was all good. Like, I, I could take the abuse. Like, if there's somebody to take the abuse from someone, I could, I could take it. It's no problem for me. <clears throat> but I think when he did that to other teammates following weeks or days it's they yeah it's just never the same again the team just breaks apart you know but i never had issues with him honestly it was cool with me <laughs> it's interesting you said that actually the plan was originally that you and lurox would compete for the jungle spot because if people don't know it wasn't just that they benched for giving a brought in accent actually even before that you got benched and then they brought lurox in mm -hmm. but at the end of the split they brought you back but then they went to lurox for the summer split and then you had to come back for like what was going on in this team like why were they going between the two junglers because people will know it's not like lurox turned out to be on because he's not even in the bloody league anymore so what was going on <laughs> What was going on? Yeah, I mean, uh, disgusting. It was it was really annoying. Like, I don't know. I got I got benched after a few weeks. Then they take Lurox. I think the logic is honestly just a young player versus older player. Plus, my salary was quite expensive. If I'm right. on the bench, I make less money. Right. I think that was the whole logic behind it. Like, this is what I always thought. Like, it was just a money thing. Like, if, if we're not getting results, we might as well just bet on Lurox, uh, a cheap rookie, you know. Right, but, here's what's... Uh, yeah, go on, keep going. Yeah, but, but basically, when Lurox was in, they were ne never successful. When I was in, they had success. When I played the Prime League, like German League, we won the Prime League. Uh, when Lurox played the Prime League, they didn't win. So, I don't know. They didn't really see it, I think. But the results showed it, I think, that I, I was better. 
Right, I heard a story. It actually hasn't come out at the time I'm recording this, but it'll be out by the time people see this episode, obviously. I did a Reflections with Otto Amde, and I asked him about the, the Schalke Miracle Run, and he actually told me a cool anecdote I don't think he's ever told before publicly. He said that actually one of the first things that happened was you. He said you're actually sort of like the progenitor of the milk run. He said you got, you actually, for real, came in when the team was like 1-10 to 10 or whatever that insane like terrible record was. He said you came in, and for real, you just said to everyone, like, have you all got your tickets? And everyone was like, the fuck have we got tickets for? Like, and you're like, for Shanghai, because Worlds was in Shanghai that year. Now, look, obviously the team didn't make it to Worlds, but he actually says for real that that made him just be like, holy shit, this guy's a baller. Like, we're actually garbage right now, but he's actually talking like we could do it. Like, what? how much of that was like, you know, on the one hand, like, there is an element of confidence. It's like, fake it till you make it. You know, you decide I'm going to be confident. I'm going to give every chance. I'm going to look for the positive. But were you, did you really have the vision? Like, we can do this? Were you just saying it to spoil people? I, what was the what was the, what was the idea? I, I had the vision, honestly. I I don't know. I, I had a feeling in my stomach that we're gonna go big that year. I don't know. I just sometimes you just have a feeling. I felt like it was my year, you know, like everything. Like I don't know. I would play it again. I was. I would think to myself, "Holy shit, I'm the best jungler in Europe." You know, that's what the first thought was, and. I also on paper that roster was so good in my eyes. Like I, I thought we could we could do it, you know. Like so, I just for them it sounded crazy back then, but I actually like truly believed it. Like I'm not joking. It, it it's it's still crazy to think about it that like how it's even possible from one ten. But yeah, right. What I have to ask you is this: is even when you were in the Prime League, it's not like they just made you the superstar player and you got your pick every single time. Like you played a couple of lease in games. In this particular miracle run, people will remember the reason why you were winning player of the game is you were really having some like Smurf jungle games, Lee Sin, Kazakhs. Like you were having some games that I think actually, if anyone had, like I said earlier, perceptions about who you are as a player, like I'm sure you must have earned respect in this moment because actually you were you, I, like the joke is if you'd said that same line you said a minute ago like I felt like I was one of the best junglers in a past year everyone would laugh at you but I'm pretty sure from these games they'd have to give it up would you, you kind of were smurfing right yeah I was smurfing I was also playing carry champions mostly which people were not used to seeing from yeah I was usually the tank guy but yep. I was like popping off with carries so I think showed a new side to my game as well uh yeah I, I had some really, really good games for sure. And I needed to have those, you know, if to to hold a win streak like that, especially in BO ones, you gotta pop off every game, you know. And we never stopped, so did the team actually sort of have like a vibe of like we're doing a streak here? Or was it more just sort of like I mean, you could also make the argument, even though as you said before in past years, there's team times when people lose hope that you can do it. Sometimes that can also be freeing. You can just kind of go, hey, fuck it, we'll just play however we want, no pressure, right? Was there an element of that? Was there was there kind of a thing of like, oh my god, we won one, two, three? like when did it start to become a real thing, do you think? I think when the pressure was on was actually the last week. Right. Um before that, we were like, okay, like game by game, no pressure. It's fucked anyways. Just like play like we always do. But then when we're like in the on the on the I think five zero win streak and we need like three more, I could feel the pressure was heating up. But it actually did not matter at all for some reason. Like even though there was so much pressure and everyone would wanted this to happen. We just like kept smurfing and kept playing good. And I think Dylan Falco was also extremely important on that run because this guy, I don't know, like once we had the meta in our hands, he would like evolve it, evolve it, evolve it. And like no team could catch up to us. Like we were always one step ahead in drafts as well. So everything was falling in its place. Like it was the perfect story, honestly. Yeah, actually, he is someone I wanted to ask about because I have to say, it was already obvious if you looked at the other teams he was in. But now that he's been in G2, everyone can see it every fucking time. This guy's just a draft wizard, right? He just finds, yeah. not only does he find edges, but I have to say, Inspired told me this, and I agree. Dude, he might be the best coach I've ever seen at like tricking the opponent into picking a champion they want. But if they do so, it's like you go, you just activated his trap card, and now it's like sets up the comp that he wanted to play. Like the guy's just, he's got like some sort of crazy mind for it, right? Yeah, for sure. I, he he's kind of crazy with it. I mean, how old is he? He's like over thirty. All this guy does is think about League of Legends drafts. Like he's like a mad scientist. I mean, it's kind of crazy. But um, it, yeah, it's the smartest coach I ever worked with in my career. Like, I don't know. We we players we only had to give a little bit of input, and he would like 
like do do all the rest do all the work uh, like work you know Right, obviously, you can say that this summer and then the following spring split is basically how Abadage's career leveled up because it, it looked so good for him in mid lane that he got signed by 100 Thieves, he got to go and win championships, be in LCS, and then, have, like, like I say, a level up to his career, right? What's the secret? Because people will remember the year before, people said that he's a choker or he has some sort of issues. He himself didn't seem that confident when he used to play in the in the previous year's team. What what does Abedagi need to be? Like you saw the player we saw here. What does he need to be unleashed, do you think, from his jungler? Uh, like gameplay-wise? Or? Yeah, how do you play for him? Or how do you help him be his best? Mm, I mean, Abedagi was easy to play for. He would. You just need to make sure he doesn't get ganked, doesn't get killed. Like... I would just like, like Jizuka and Abedaga are complete, the complete opposite. Like with playing with Jizuka is like where I have to be a wild dog. I gotta get my hands dirty, fight people, fight him off his lane. I don't know, like dive people. With Abedaga, it's more like more of a scaling approach. Make sure he gets one or two items, and this guy's just gonna take over the whole game. So um, definitely more relaxing to play with, I would say, and. I think when with, with Felix, it also just comes down to his personality. Like, he just needs to have self belief and believe that, yeah, he can beat the opponent and he he can do so. Like, he's just he just needs somebody to push him and give him confidence. I think that's really what he needs to perform. Right. Obviously, the next year, the team, it's funny because obviously with Abedagi leaving after the spring split, it's sort of like made that team not have the chance to go to Worlds, etc. But people will forget in the spring season, this roster with the upgrades was really interesting. Like, obviously, they yeah. brought in Broken Blade, who had had all that success in NA. You had um, Neon, obviously, people forget, came in during the Miracle Run. That was another factor that caused it. You had Limit, who actually at the time was pretty good. People remember, this is probably his prime, actually, I think, when he was looking at his best. Mm -hmm. Like, this lineup, even though in the regular season it was just all right, people. Uh, I think people really sleep on this playoff run this spring, actually. Like, yeah. one, you guys straight up almost beat that reckless G2 super team. That was, like, real. And then after that, like, that fucking rogue team probably should have won the league that year. Like, it's actually a pretty good run. Yeah. Like, this was like, and you yourself were having some great games. What do you remember about this particular run? Oh, I just, this team, it was so fun to play with this team. I, I thought we were so good. Like, when we 3 0 would Fnatic, and then. I mean, we actually kind of had a close series with Rogue, right? I think that was the best team in the league at that time. It was hard. Like, it, it was also the only jungler I really, like, really struggled against where I, like, had to play, like, perfectly without any mistakes, like, inspired, right? Um, no, it was... It, we had a... We definitely had a really fun playoff run. Uh, I think we finished that split top three, right? Uh, I um, think... Or top fourth, four. fourth, I think. I think you were fourth. Yeah. Yes. And uh, for me, it was sad that the roster couldn't stay together next, but like I thought we would make Worlds 100% with that team. So it was really heartbreaking. Well, even if you said with past top laners, you didn't really have much of a connection, you sort of played for the mid laner, you surely must have had some connection with Broker Blade. Yeah. It seems like right up your alley. So you must vibe with him immediately, right? Yeah, for sure. He's also very vocal in game, and he calls the jungler like directly oh, right. to his lane. Right, and he he gives you also like timers to play around. You have a window here, ten to twenty seconds. Now it's, I think that's why also junglers most of the time end up topside in in the teams with BB because he's he's just super vocal, and if there's nothing else to do on the map, you just end up on topside, you know. So how do you explain this to me? Because I've noticed this is another theme of your career. Whenever you hit like a high, right? It's like, we're getting ready for tomorrow. There must be an anvil going to fall on my head or something. There's always some bad coming after. It's like, where were you in the summer? What happened? Why, why, why were you gone from the team after this? Uh, honestly, it's a shocker, yeah, to me as well. Um, so first, I told the management I want... I don't want to play with nuclear int. I want to have maybe can we pick up someone better? Because I didn't think that highly of him back then. That was maybe my bad, but I don't know. Uh they they basically said no, like nuclear int is gonna be the mid laner. And I don't know. And then all of the I, I guess after asking that question, they already like made an opinion about what I think playing with him. So they were like, okay, we need a new jungler. So they I was just out. I don't know. <laughs> It didn't even ask me if I want to play with this guy. I literally just asked if, I, if we can get an other mid laner. But I guess they didn't like that. So 
You know, the joke is, mate, you know, like uh, there's certain players who like actually need chat restriction. They need to restrict their own chat so they can't type and get banned. The joke is you just need to just play when you're in a team and not message anyone. Because if you message another team's GM, your GM, it's over at that point. Like you're going to somehow the conversation just goes the wrong way. Apparently it just doesn't work out, does it? (laughs) I, if I didn't say anything, I would have played yeah, exactly. that summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I just, yeah, just kind of shut up, I guess. My bad. Thing is, though, I actually do. I, I think I can spin it into a positive, Gilius, which is this. Mm. Even if people might think you're arrogant for thinking so, I think in all these scenarios, you're always looking at your career and asking, is there like a better way I can go? Can I get a better teammate? Can I go to a better team? Can, can I take the next step up, right? It shows a, shows a level of ambition, right? Yeah, for sure. I always want to upgrade. And when I see a problem in a, like... A weakness in the team, I definitely instantly want to make it better next split. Like when I promoted to the, when I promoted to the LCS with Unicorns of Love, I remember on the plane I was sitting next to Hillisang and I told him, Hey man, like going into next year, like we just promoted. I was like, going into next year, maybe we should get forgiven, man. I think with Vardax <laughs> we're gonna struggle. Okay. And Hilly he Hilly was like, Yeah, sure, we can think about it, you know. Okay. But yeah, I, I mean, one thing, another thing I've noticed as a theme in this interview is being as you've been in a million different teams, right? In English, at least in terminology, what we say about that is you normally call that person a mercenary. The idea is they'll play for anyone and they just move from team to team too. But actually, it feels like you have the opposite actual view when you're in a team. Like I noticed in this scenario, I would call that taking ownership. It's like you actually think of like, if I'm in this team, I'm not just a player and I'm not just going to play and let this player do a mistake or this other player have problems. I'm going to actually view it like it's my home and try and, like you say, upgrade things, make it better, figure out the system. Them, what problems have we got? This sounds like actually a quality maybe people don't know about you, Gilius. Yeah, I think uh, teams should have also cherished that. Like, I, in the long run, I can attract really good players to the team. I can make the, the roster good. Like, I think in Schalke, um, the big reason why we got Broken Blade and Limit was, was also me. You know, it was, uh, I was the, I had many says in that offseason and I still don't understand how they like bench me in the summer after that, but yeah, yeah, it's fine. I don't know. Right. When you came then to play in the SK gaming team, the funny thing is I actually remember thinking just like almost every year of SK gaming, like what a shrewd sort of decision this is. Cause if you notice one thing SK does is cause they're not just going to pay like the highest salaries in the league. They try to pick people where it's like this, like maybe other people are out on this guy, but we're in on him or this person hasn't yet made it yet. The problem with that, that lineup is look, I don't want to name names. You can name names if you want, but I'll just say this. I don't think you were the problem with this lineup, mate. The real issue with this lineup is you've got stuff like people who are role swapped. You've got people who quite frankly i don't think we're lec quality they're not an lec now spoiler like this was kind of a bit of a messy roster right like i don't like i get the idea i could see why people mm. might think it had a chance but it, i don't think it was actually that good no i was not so good scrims scrims were giving us a lot of fake confidence like right we we're actually doing pretty well in scrims but couldn't translate to state stage it was difficult very difficult year for me yeah. Do you think people have like labeled you? Like you said earlier about being an older player as well. Do, do people have, do you think people like, are you considered like a known quantity? Is that the reason why you, you don't always get as many good offers after these ones end? Cause this is another one where I get, look, I know it wasn't a great year, but like the idea, no LEC team's going to pick up after that. Like what, what happened? I think it's really straightforward with, with me since I talk so much and I'm like so confident when I just don't win, people are just like, there's zero offers. When I win, there's 20 offers. It's just how my career is. I just didn't get any, uh, I didn't get to playoffs with SK, so the teams decided, yo, this guy is not playing in LEC anymore. It's just uh, how, it, how it always also is. Like, when I am successful in the league, I get so many offers, you know, from America, Europe, everywhere, but... It's just how it is, you know. It's not easy for me to uh, continuously play in the LEC. Also, people think my contracts are super expensive because I've been playing for so long. But that's not really true, you know. I've been underpaid my whole career, so... Are you someone where, even though, like I say, people might have thought you were like a meme as a jungler early on, I actually have to say, with how long you've played now, your mechanics have held up really well. Like, that's still one of your best parts of your yeah. game, right? People think that, people think, I think mainly it's because of Jankos, they think when you get older, your mechanics go and then you can't play the catch. Your game's basically the same in the best ways as it was at the beginning, right? 100%. I, I can also still every year hit top 20, top 10 in, in the ladder. Like, my mechanics are still strong. 
Yeah. Are you someone where, like, can you actually, you see, you don't seem like bombed out about the way your career's gone. Are you able to look back and like, just see the positives? Of it? Like, unfortunately, when I look at it, I'm looking at like a lot of like, no, oh, you could have maybe done this or what if you'd stayed in this team or, oh shit, what if that player had joined, you know, like you don't ever, do you not get like doubts or what ifs or wonder like, ah, fuck, did I, did I mess that up? What's your perspective in that sense? The bigger picture. I mean, some what ifs is after the miracle run, my agent, like, Contact me. He was like, "Hey, uh, Fnatic is very interested in oh, you and Fnatic Abedaga. again, right? Okay, <laughs> yeah. Like Fnatic is very interested in you and Abadaga. And then I remember, like, I called Felix. I was like to share him the news, you know. So we like we're going to Fnatic, bro. He's like, "Hey, he's like, oh yeah, hey back. I wanted to tell you, I just signed. I just like renewed with Schalke. <laughs> oh, no, right? Okay. It's like okay, not gonna tell him, I guess. <laughs> okay." And he's he's like, oh, you're you're staying as well, right? I was like, yeah, yeah, probably. And then, yeah, that was so. What if for sure? Because if I got to play with Abadaga in a team like Fnatic, as an example, I don't know two three years, what would have happened in my career? And then, yeah, like playing out that next split with Schalke, do we make it to Worlds? Because I truly believe we will. Yeah, that's just some stuff. I, I guess also like the vitality situation where I left the team where I could have played Wales with them, right? Gotten that whole experience in. Definitely did some mistakes, regret some stuff I did in my career, but overall I, I can, I think, be happy here, mostly. Right, since you did play for so many years, I thought what I could do is ask you about other European junglers and you just give me like a thought on each one, give me what, what perspective you have on them. So from way back in the day, you know, it was obviously a pair of yours pretty much the whole time, was Jankos. The most legendary jungler ever. You you were there. You battled him. You were on teams. You were in the LCS. You were out the LCS. Like, what is this? You've seen his whole career. So, what, who was Jankos to you? Uh, Jankos is to me beast in official games. Just turns into a different player when he's on the on the stage. Like, yeah, I don't know. Just super sound uh, decision making. Surprisingly good mechanically in some situations. Never really like I've played with Junkos for over ten years in scrims and in solo queue. Never really respected him much. Oh right, okay. I can easily outplay this guy like all the time, but I don't know. In official games, he's just different. He's just uh, performs, you know, when it matters. Right, even though now, sadly, because of the last year or so, his career's sort of gone down a bit, another person who was a peer of yours was obviously Cersei, the Romanian jungler who was in teams like Splice and more recently like Origin and other XL, etc. Who was this guy to you? Seems like a very different play style to yours, but that way. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I don't know. I never, I, I think that guy's super overrated, honestly. Okay, not feeling it. Fair enough. No, no not feeling it. What about then, an interesting one, I will certainly be interested in what your thoughts are, self-made, obviously, because, listen, I've always said this, if you don't know what's going on in the teams, you can have whatever opinion you want, but, like, look, the eye test for his mechanics is pretty impressive. Like, he has skill, right? Yeah, I mean, when it comes to mechanics, this guy's number one. He, he, he can play champs, no one, nobody can. It's just, uh, he's just a player where what would have happened if it was just like this... I, I, I always imagined this. If I had self-made hands and we right. could use my right. work ethic and my discipline, then combine this, he would have been insane jungler. But just some some stuff is happening um, to this guy. Like I don't know, his work ethic is not amazing. I would say. Yes. But uh, I'm still hoping that maybe he can still do a comeback to LEC and like really be the guy everyone expects him to be. So there's still hope. He's still really young, right? And then, as you say, obviously, especially on the second time around, you got to play against Inspired, who actually was the MVP of the league, if people forget. And obviously, he's even been the MVP in LCS as well. Who is Inspired? Well, it's, I think that's the best EU jungler I've faced, like, hands down. What is he like, good at? I don't know, like, when it comes to just the jungle role, like, the all the scrims I had against this guy, like, it was always really competitive, and that's a, a guy where I can also say sometimes, yeah, he's just better than me. Um, I would also have his number here and there, but most of the time he was better than me. The guy's just super smart about the role, plays every champ, um, doesn't make many mistakes, you know, like, he's just a very solid player, hard to play against. 
against other junglers you can allow to make like 10 20 mistakes but with this inspired in that meta the farming meta one mistake one raptor invade he will just snowball for the rest of the game never let go i always thought that guy was super impressive is it true? Because I've actually heard some, like, uh, this is one of the things that made me get hyped about him when he was in Rogue. Someone told me, if you ever watch, he's almost a bit like a Korean jungler. Like, he seems to have a very strong sense, like, where you are, the other jungler, like, control style. Et cetera. Would you say that's accurate? I would say that's accurate, yeah. He, he plays similar to the Koreans, for sure, yeah. Right, what about, obviously, another person from the same sort of almost peer group of Inspired was obviously the Spanish player El Yoya, who's kind of, mm. obviously, he's won the championship. I think he's kind of been a revelation. What's this player been like? I feel like you should vibe with this. I feel like you'd love his playing style, don't you? No, I like it. I mean, I'm I'm one of the people who discovered this guy. But oh, like right. I was, okay. I was Tell playing, me the story. Uh, I was playing scrims with uh, Schalke back then. And against, I think, like Spanish second division team. And I, I, I instantly thought, wow, the enemy jungler is pretty fucking good. Who is this guy? I was like, yeah, it's El Yoya. No clue who this guy is. And I, I don't know what it is, but when I say a jungler is good, it really sticks with the team. Because I remember there was this off-season where I, after Miracle Run, I'm having all these offers and I'm like taking my time with saying to Schalke if I stay. And then the GM of Schalke to pressure me, he says, oh, if you don't sign soon, we're going to go with this El Yoya kid. Oh, we right. heard. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I said he's good, so there must... Oh, it's a good, specific right? needle to you to get you to do it, right? Okay. Maybe, yeah, but he... I mean, El Yoya was also really fucking good, so it's understandable, but yeah. And then I, I was like, okay, fuck this. I'm not going to wait more. I'm just going to sign. But uh, El Yoya, yeah, super talent, super good. He also learned, I think, the game very well. Like, he was... He doesn't have many bad habits, you know? I don't think he's that impressive like he used to be anymore. Like, I used to think really highly of him, actually, when he won the championships. Sure. But since last year and this year, you know, he's okay. He's there, but it's not anything special talking about his last two years. And then, actually, I have one more Spanish jungle. Obviously, Razork from Fnatic. What do you think of this guy? Uh, Razork. Yeah, I mean... He, he's he's fine, I guess. It's nothing special, honestly. <laughs> and his I mechanic's never... pretty good. He's pretty skilled, right? Surely. I mean, is there some beef here you're not telling me about? Is there some reason why you downplay it? No, I just, just like my, my ego can't handle it. Like, I don't know. My okay. first experiences okay. facing Razok, I swear to you, my first game I ever played against this guy, Spanish League, I went 17 and 0 on Italy <laughs> against okay. him. Fair I like, I literally lived in his jungle and I didn't okay. let him breathe, suffocated him. So that's I still in your he, mind always. You're always just thinking that that I'd do that to him if I played him against. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I can't, I can't, I can't let that go. You know, but he, he's okay, I guess. He's like, he's up there. I mean, Junkos, Elioria, Inspired, Razok. Who else is there? I mean, yeah, these are the best. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, sure. By the way, are you someone where, what is your process to actually getting into good form? Are you someone, is it lots of solo queue? Do you like to do like theory set? Do you like to do VOD review? Would you like to watch other regions? What's what's the Gilius approach to returning back to a good level each time you need to? Uh, a lot of VOD review. Like my, my brain specifically works that way. Like when I watch a lot of good sequences from good players, like I can pick it up really easily and like, um, like when I see the fast pace of other leagues, like I can like really like utilize it into my game. So vault review has always been a big thing for me, and also playing a lot of solo queue. So combination between these two, I think. Like because if you only vault review, I have tried that and not play much solo queue. It doesn't really work. You know the hands right. need to be in place as well. One thing I want to ask you is, obviously, in the time when you haven't actually been playing professionally, you have made a name for yourself as part of Dom Stream in the sack with Yamato and all those guys in that group. But I actually think what's interesting is it feels like that has made you be received in a completely different way. Like I said before, I always felt like people didn't quite get your personality. Because like I say, I think they're only used to that style of trash talk from the person who's the champion. Like I say, if you'd have been Yankos and you did exactly the same statements, I think everyone would love it. I think actually the joke is he could have actually had the same brand from G2 now, but years 
years earlier. So, but I felt like people always did hold it against you. Whereas I noticed when somehow in that group of people, now it seems that you become like a fan favorite. Like people are loving your angle and what you're adding to the group. What do you think? What's the experience been like to do that that particular show? And obviously, I think part of it is the balance of everyone on there. Right? It's not just you or Dom. It's yeah. an interesting group of people, right? Ah, it's been super fun. I mean, I always enjoy watching good League of Legends, right? So it's uh, always more fun to like uh, speak to people while watching, having having some fun, having some jokes here and there, analyzing the games. I think Dom is also very underrated when it comes to like game analysis. The guy is actually super smart about the game. So he, yeah, we we can teach each other things here and there and learn stuff from the best players. So. I've been having a good time, honestly, and we have also become good friends over the last year, so it's been cool, yeah. By the way, I'm just going to do this as like a, this is my one uh, one favor I'll do you in this interview, Gilius, which is, I actually also think part of why people sometimes misperceive you is they don't get that you're in on the joke. Like, first of all, some of the trash talk, like you, like the joke about what you said about Razork, really, it was just that silly anecdote you were remembering. Obviously, you know, he's a good player now, but you just made it funny in that way. Made it, and like, it sounded really interesting when you even said that comment, right? But I actually think for real, mate, people think when you're like bad, in, like, as though you're like a simp for that kitty. I think they actually think that's real, bit. I think they actually don't get that entertainment. And like, you know, you're sort of like the butt of the joke in that moment, right? You, you sometimes on a sometimes on a stream, it's like wrestling. Someone has to lose the fight, so the other guy gets to win, right? Do you know what I mean? Like, people maybe miss that part, but you also get that it's a banter and a joke, right? I, I of of course I'm in on the joke, man. I'm the actor. Yes. Plus. Exactly. By no, the way, don't worry about that. <laughs> it's not real. Yeah. No, no. Do you actually get that sense? By the way, do you think like public perceptions change on you? Have you seen it turn a bit? Mm. I don't know. What I realized is people want me to be more blunt and like straightforward, okay. and I don't. They, they like it when I like just say my opinion and like doesn't matter if I hurt feelings. That's what I realized. Like people just like the the blunt truth, you know. So I'm. Gonna do that more in the future. I think just like, even though if it's pisses off some people, I will just say what I think. But yeah, I think people have perceived me pretty nicely. Yeah, it's been it's been good the last <laughs> months on social media for sure. Right, if people ever hear you talk, at least in your mind, it sounds like it's not over. Like you still think you could be really good. You still think you could probably be better than some of the people in LEC now. If you put me in the game, you know, give me the right to. Your career isn't over as a player, right? If you get the options, or the offers are there, or there's the chance you're gonna keep going, right? I think so. I mean, I'm. What I know right now is Wales is in Europe this year. If I go through all the Wales players in Solokyu, like rip them all apart, people will be watching these games, you know, like <laughs> okay. see what I do to, to to these players. Then I think there's a shot for me next year. We like it's all on me, really. Like I will put in the time. I will smurf in Solokyu. There will be screenshots of what I do to these junglers, and then maybe I get a random chance, maybe a tryout here and there. Uh, and I can prove myself. If not, uh, I'm fine doing streaming. Um, maybe I will consider doing an ERL project in the future. Um, but yeah, not a big fan, honestly. The ERL projects, I, I don't know what happened to the money in the ERL scene, but they don't really want to pay any salaries anymore. So I'm not really too interested. Right, it's obviously up to you if you want to say a name or not. But if I asked you, just since you, you, you offered that, that as a premise, right? If I asked you, who is the best player in solo queue that you've smurfed on? Who would it be? Have you ever like smurfed on like some sick Korean player or something? There must be some like big game in your mind. Like, what's, who's the best one yeah. you think you've smurfed on? Who have you beaten the best? The best like a jungler, yeah? Yeah. What Ooh. would be a big name that would surprise people? You, you, can, you can mix it up with these people. Who would you say? Hmm... Probably like Prime Peanut in Ooh, season. Okay. I don't six know what season that maybe? was. Some like season six or seven, seven. Yeah, or where, when I was in, in E United, season six, I think that oh, was there we go. when the rank one Peanut. I I beat him in solo queue. That was that that Peanut was incredibly good. Like he was insane. Even though it's just a solo queue game, did you feel like you like won worlds as well when you won the game? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, felt like a god for a week straight. Yeah. <laughs> of course. By the way, this is actually an aspect that's weird because here's what's funny, mate. First of all, I actually do know and I've known some of your teammates and coaches. Like like I say, part of this is for the camera, part of it's having fun with it and stuff like that. Like 
you're not like that person inside team being cocky to everyone, etc. But I actually do think it's an underrated aspect. Like I think in the modern world, mate, everyone tells everyone like, be humble, like don't be cocky. But it's like, yeah, but the, it's actually, it, uh, here's the thing, mate. It's way easier to tell someone really. It's like, but it's like aggression in the game. It's easier to tell an aggressive player, be a little bit less aggressive than it is to tell a super passive player, be aggressive. Like he doesn't even know what that is. So in the same sense, it's way harder to tell people, be confident if they're not actually like, if you think of some yeah. of the names we've talked about in this interview, didn't make it. I'm sure that was one of the problems a lot of them probably had. It wasn't scale. I imagine it was like they got eventually they lost hope and then they had no faith in themselves. And then the the joke is eventually they almost like they agree that they shouldn't have a career and they go and do something else. Like what your one of your biggest strengths beyond anything in the game seems like that you have self-belief, right? You've you've always believed you can be it and that you should be a better player and that you can be a better player and you can be better than the people currently playing, right? I would say so, yeah. Like self-belief, confidence, and persist persistence, I think, as well, yeah. Like big time. Yeah, never giving up, always yeah, like working as hard as I can. So Are you someone where like how do you explain your career to people who are in your life but who aren't esports people? Like do they think of you as like you're an athlete? Are you a, a professional? What how do how do you explain how do they do they get it? Do you think they understand? No, they don't get it. They they just think I'm like lucky and like spoiled to have like, <laughs> right. a job like this. Yeah, yeah. They never put any respect on this. Like the only person really is probably my brother because he like knows how much I how much time I invest in this and how much time with friends and family I sacrificed. Um, but yeah, that, I don't know. When people ask me what do you do as a job, I say I play video games professionally, and then they like start smiling. They think it's ridiculous, you know. So. Being as you had that example earlier, that baller story that Odo Amne told me about telling them, like, you're going to go to Worlds with Schalke or whatever, right? And obviously now, like I say, I think perception's changed. People are allowing you to trash talk now. Like, they're not getting mad at it anymore, right? Have you ever done that at any other point in your career? Like, have you ever had a mad time where maybe people don't know this publicly, but you thought, like, privately, like, dude, we're going to win the EU LCS or, like, fuck, we're going to Worlds. Like, have you ever actually thought, like, we're going to do something yeah. crazy? Have you, have you ever had that moment in your career? Yeah, and in Vitality, when we're on the seven-game win streak... 7-0. I thought we are winning the league 100%. And we were actually not that far away from winning either. Like, if we don't draw Fnatic in the semifinals, if we draw G2 as an example, we are easily in finals. Oh, there was a better and matchup, you think, right? Yeah, yeah. That Fnatic was hard to beat, you know? Sure. It was and the, then the best year, yeah, of course. We actually took one game off Fnatic and then we just had a misban. I don't know if you remember. The, do you know the story where Jizuka doesn't ban the champion? Oh, right. Okay. He just forgets to. Yeah. So you just lose yeah, one for no reason, right? We say, we say ban Swain, ban Swain. Jizuka, ban Swain. He doesn't ban Swain. They first pick Swain. We do 3 1. You know? <laughs> oh, God. No. And that's that Swain was so broken. We yeah, had to. This is played it, right? This is when he was like smurfing on it, I think, right? Wasn't it? No, no. It was Swain mid lane. Spend Holy it. fuck, all right. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so okay. broken. It and we didn't ban it. Imagine we ban Spain that game, we go 2 2. I don't know. Uh, if we beat that fanatic, we win the split, you know. It, we, were, we were close, honestly. Okay. Yeah. By the way, another yeah. thing I also feel like people probably don't know is I actually get the vibe, even if there's some GMs are biased or some players are biased against you, I actually think team owners must love you, dude. Like, you know how bad most teams are? The joke is until G2, most dogs had no clue how to do, like, f interesting content on social media or have a branding personality. They were just, like, essentially the results of the team was how good the team is. Like, I, I get the vibe. The actual orgs must love that aspect about you, right? That you've sort of come prepackaged with, like, a, you've got sort of your own brand, like mm -hmm. I say. Yeah, I think so, yeah. I mean, so, some don't. I think in Schalke, it was not too appreciated. Okay. Like, I always got some flag here and there. Like, I th I remember I went on the Crackdown show with you and Dom. I got into a bit of trouble for... What, for talking shit? Yeah, I don't know. Like, my language, the language I oh, used. Oh, right. Like, okay. I, I used some slur words and stuff, so... Okay. Depends on the orc I met, but... Yeah, in, in Schalke, it was a bit harder. There, I had to be, like, the nice kid, you know? But, yes. <laughs> yeah, it depends where you're at, you know. If someone asked you, what is Gilius's goal left in esports? What what would you explain it as? What's the goal? I think just, uh, yeah, like winning championships still. Like if I don't do it as a player, then I will do it as a coach in the future. I think that's very much what I want to do in the future. Yeah. Still what, like comp what do you see uh, in terms of coaching? Why do you see that as a potential path? What, what, what would be interesting about it to you? Or what do you think you would fit if, of that role? I think first of all, like I'm good at impacting a group of people in a positive way. 
and I know a lot about the game and I I'm really good at making connections like about the game where okay this patch just dropped uh, these champions are extremely good and then my brain is really good at recognizing okay when these champs are good on this meta these champs come back like I'm just really good at kind of like innovating matters and like yeah and like yeah I'm, I, I learned a lot <laughs> throughout my whole career so I think I could be very useful in the coaching position now. At the end of this interview, do you have a final message? Is there anyone you want to thank or say hello to? I want to say thank you uh, to uh, Torin for inviting me to this interview and thanks to all the people who supported me throughout all the, the last years. And yeah, my career is not over yet. I will keep going and thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you, Sean. Events come and go, fame rises and then falls away. You have a job, you lose a job. You do one thing, you have to move on to another. But one of the cool things about my career is I have my own support network who's always got my back. So I always know I can rely on the support to do the work I want to do and talk the way I want to talk and not have to follow certain rules that others arbitrarily have to follow. And that support group is, of course, called the Skrilluminati, my Patreon community. This video and all the others on my channel was kindly supported by Matt Pugnaccio Rakula, Frisky, Ahmed Haju, Tobias Bernasconi, Toucan, Tosh, Jensen Gore, Animosity, and you know it, always my main man, Jerky's Minion, rocking with me, ride or die. Would you like to suggest a topic or a guest for a future episode of Reflections or a talk show? Do you want teasers? Find out who the upcoming guests are. Maybe you want to ask me a question for my video AMA where I tend to go quite in depth, or perhaps you want to take part in one of those really long donated discussions where we talk about whatever you're into in esports. Well, if any of those perks or any of the others catch your fancy, join the Skluminati today via the Patreon link in the description box where down below.